Okay, cool. So every, everybody can see now? Let's try full screen again. Cool. We'll start that over. Uh, my name is Matt Raleigh. I'm going to be talking about indie game development in Fennel and Love. So uh, who am I? I've been making games and programming for the last 12 years based in San Diego. Um, worked full-time in the finance tech industry in San Diego the last eight years. Um, I recently quit my job to go full-time indie in October and live uh, the indie dream. Prior to that, I'd been working on you know nights and weekends, kind of a big project in Unity for like six months or so, and I was getting really frustrated with mainstream game development tools, namely, you know, C Sharp or C++ or even some JavaScript languages and, and feeling like I was spending so much time, you know, typing things that didn't need to be typed and uh, sort of swimming upriver with some of these languages. And I was kind of dreaming about something that was game dev first, right? And um, that's sort of where Fennel came in. So I've been using Fennel full time for the last two months um, on an indie game project that I hope to launch on Steam early next year. Um, so I think before I get into sort of why I chose Fennel, I think it's uh, cool to add a little context to sort of how I got here and how I, the, the various Lisp languages I went through and played with before arriving at Fennel. Um, so in the beginning, like I said, I was frustrated with mainstream game dev tools, I felt like a lot of the languages that I was using just weren't supporting me as a game developer. You know, I don't care about type systems. I don't care about, you know, pointers necessarily and moving bytes around. And I just want something that is expressive. And I want to be able to say when these two things touch, do an explosion, right? Um, and in general, I was becoming disenchanted with programming, especially working in finance. You know, I was um, trying to push more functional programming and more closure at work and it wasn't really happening and we were a full TypeScript stack and every change involved, you know, well first we got to update the interfaces and then fix all the compiler errors and then, you know, the whole the whole Lisp spiel. I, I was, after watching a few uh, Rich Hickey talks and reading Andy Gavin's and making a Crash Bandicoot, I was sold. I was like, all right, Lisp is the answer. Um, I didn't quite get it yet, but I but I knew it was right. So I made bunch of experimental games in common list closure and scheme um, one of those is called the funny farm that I made for Ludum dare 49 and closure script um, this is a great experience um, I Paul if you look at the code I apologize for the quality it was a 48 hour game jam but it was a great sort of intro for me to Lisp game development but something that didn't quite feel right is if any of you have done any closure development, um, it's it's functional first and almost functional only, which is not a bad thing and, in, and in fact, very much the right answer for a lot of problems. But for, for game dev, you know, I want to be able to say X plus equals DT times 10, right? Or something like that. Just, I don't want to think about, well, that should be an atom or whatever and deal with, you know, immutable versus mutable data structures. I just wanted to be declarative as well as functional when it was right. So great experience, but Clojure wasn't really feeling right. Um, next, I tried to bring Lisp into Unity. So like I said, I've been working on a long-standing Unity project for about six months. Um, I played with Arcadia, loved Arcadia, especially some of the ideas that um, Ramsey Nasser had, if you've ever watched any of his talks, around things that Clojure, that he extended Clojure via macros to do inside of Unity, such as like his timeline concept, that I thought were really interesting. I thought, okay, this is, this is why they made Crash Bandicoot and Lisp, right? But the Arcadia project has some export issues and it's not necessarily cross-platform. That's maybe better now with Magic, um, the new Clojure compiler that Ramsey Nasser is working on. Um, I then tried to bring this pure C-sharp scheme implementation into Unity. Um, that worked pretty well, but again, you know, I was completely alone. There was no open source community doing this. There was no easy libraries. I was inventing everything from scratch. So, you know, I quit my job and I was like, okay, I, I need to pick something. I need to start writing code. What are, what are my requirements? What do I want out of a game development stack to support me in this, in this, you know, sabbatical going indie, trying to come out the other side with the game. I wanted a good framework to support me. I've used Unreal, Unity, Godot, Game Maker, custom engines from scratch and C++ and Rust. And I, I had a pretty good idea of, of what I wanted. I wanted a Lisp language with a good macro system. I had no preference on dialect. 
Um, as long as the macros were good, I had some kind of crazy ideas about a game dev first language that I wanted to build where things like state machines or language level constructs. And I knew that a Lisp was a, was a good entry point and a low barrier to entry to sort of exploring some of those ideas. Um, it needed to be cross-platform. Uh, I want to release my games eventually on platforms like mobile desktop and console. Not an option as easily, you know, if you look at Clojure, um, you know, look at what Slay the Spire went through to bring their Java game to mobile and console. Um, you know, Lua, obviously with Love, is super cross-platform. We've seen Love 2D games on mobile, desktop, console, web. Um, I wanted a strong open source community with access to a lot of libraries. I did not want to be alone, invent, reinventing the wheel constantly. Um, I'm primarily a 2D game developer, but I want the door open to 3D. Um, and lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I wanted a fast iteration cycle, a la REPL-driven development. I wanted to be able to write some code, play it, uh, send it to the REPL, figure out if it was fun or not, make changes, repeat, right? We all, we all know the deal. So those, those are sort of my requirements, and very obviously, Fennel and Love2D was the answer. So that, that's kind of how I arrived at Fennel. Um, it's funny you bring up Janet in your talk. I actually didn't know that Janet was made by the creator of Fennel. Um, that's really interesting. But ultimately, why, why I chose Fennel over, over Janet was the open source community and all of the Lua and Love2D and all of the Lua libraries that are available within Love2D for you know, all kinds of things. So part two is sort of how Fennel has helped me in my game development and how it's made me like the most efficient programmer that I've ever been in my life. And I'm completely in love with programming again. And Fennel has just completely got me fired up. Love is an awesome game framework for super quickly making games and sort of has allowed me to do some sort of crazy things that I think um, have been really, really interesting. So what has been my experience so far? Um, Fennel has allowed me to prototype about a dozen game concepts in the last two months. Um, being solo means that I can write crazy macros and I don't have to run them by anybody else. I can sort of do my own thing and constantly break things and the only person who has to go rewrite all the code to fix the compiler errors is me. Um, I knew that Lua had a great open source community, but I was absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of amazing Lua libraries that are out there for just about everything under the sun. Um, the Love2D documentation is really good and really easy to get into, and it's super easy to use native libraries. Um, I should have put a link in here, but someone wrote a bridge for talking to Lua from Rust and getting that spun up and writing functions in Rust and calling them from Fennel was actually relatively painless, only took a couple of hours to get going. Um, so with that, I want to talk about some actual code examples of specifics where Fennel has sort of made my life easier. Um, a quick one that was sort of one of the obvious ones where I was like, okay, how is, how is Lisp able to help me write games faster? Especially with direct draw sort of graphics operations. If you've ever done any serious amount of that, you know that there's a lot of boilerplate, a lot of you know pushing and popping the transform stack, setting colors, you know, filling recs, stuff like that. I knew a lot of this I could probably automate with macros and come up with sort of a domain specific language for talking about how to draw things. And you know, again, I've only been at this a few months, and so it's not where I want it to go, but this is sort of my first foray into writing Lisp macros to sort of automate some of my game development tasks. So this is a simple drop shadow function that uses some macros to automate the setting and unsetting of various things on the transform stack. Um, next up is finite state machines. Um, state machines, if you've done any serious game development, you know are, are very core to a lot of things, especially if you've done any AI development. Um, they also have applications in you know, managing your entire game state, uh, managing input, managing dialogue, managing all sorts of things can be represented as a finite state machine. So I found this library um, by Kyle Conroy called Lewis State Machines, which honestly, when you bring into Fennel, doesn't really need anything. You take that syntax away and it's almost plain English what you're doing, right? Shoot goes from in canon to shooting. And um, this is an actual example from the game that I'm working on. It's a, a tower defense game where you, you shoot towers out of a cannon. 
And um, this was this was like already almost there. But I was like, okay, I'm feeling good about my my graphics macros. Like, let's see if we can clean this up, right? So I arrived at this, um, which to be honest, you know, it's cleaner, but I didn't really get a lot of value add out of this out, outside of like less typing, right? But I was still trying to figure out what's that that Lisp secret sauce and how to write macros. And this was a, a good, I think, step into it. This was more complicated to write and definitely taught me how to how to write macros going through this one. But um, I do think it's cleaner and I and I do enjoy using these constructs to define state machines. Um, but honestly, just the out of the box one by Kyle Conroy reads really well in Fennel already with, with no macros. Um, so those are two sort of smaller examples of what I'd hope to accomplish with a game development Lisp and what Fennel has allowed me to do. But the main one that I had really been spending a lot of time thinking about was a custom object system. So I knew from being having uh, experience in many different programming languages specific to game development, you know, Unity and, and C Sharp and um, writing custom engines in C and Rust that what I wanted out of an object system was mix and only, no inheritance. Every time I tried to build an inheritance model for, um, you know, automating game development, it, it sort of just always, I always shot myself in the foot. So I knew I wanted mix-ins only. Um, I ended up arriving at a system where mix-ins are just functions that add fields to a table. Um, everything runs on tiny ECS, which is by the creator of Fennel. It's a great ECS system and sort of the the main thing to know about that framework is that your entities are just plain Lua tables. So the meta table is completely untouched within that framework, um, which opens the door for some really cool, easy to kind of bolt together object systems that you can roll. Um, so again, the resulting objects are just a plain old table with a special meta table that I create to support some of um, the macros and stuff that I write. Uh, I wanted every method to natively support hooks so that every function call was an extension point. Um, and additive composition only, I didn't want mixins to be able to spawn other mixins. I wanted to be able to add mixins sort of without concern for what, what the side effects of that might have been. So anyways, is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. I'm a solo game developer and this is something I've been thinking about doing and I wanted to do and sort of here's where I wound up and I think it has made me much more efficient in developing prototypes for some of my game concepts. So here's a macro that defines an entity in my system. This is just a simple wall. Um, it brings in the box 2D mixin, which again is just a function that takes some properties. I wire up an event handler to the draw event. And then the result of that is just a function. So it can be easily added to my scene, which again, just adds things into the tiny ECS world, which gets updated, the box 2D mix in, um, there's a box 2D system that sees that and then adds the resultant shape and body to the box 2D world based on some events. Um, so again, really, I wanted to arrive at a concise syntax for defining my entities. Um, so that's sort of a, a small example. Um, I'm gonna give a, a very buggy demo. I was trying to fix some bugs this morning of my game and then go into how this system has allowed me to express some of the logic for my different towers in my tower defense game. So let's see if this runs. So here's the game. So you shoot these little towers out of a cannon and then after that, the towers sort of behave like they would in an auto battler where they sort of fight these little creeps that come in. And these various towers all have sort of different things that they do and properties, but a lot of things about them are the same. They get shot out of a cannon, they bump into creeps, they do damage, they disappear after a certain amount of time. Um, sort of some shared traits, right? Which you previously you might reach for a base class or something like that um, in other steps, but I wanted to see what's the most concise way possible that I could represent the tower logic. So, um, go back here. Dun, dun, dun. So this is sort of what I arrived at for um, a series of mixins and entities for defining towers very concisely. So I have a, a basic tower shape, which is just a box 2D um, Sorry, thing. It looks like the um, the game itself isn't isn't coming through on the screen share. Uh, oh, did it not? It is, but uh, probably something to do with the GPU or something. Um, 
Um, we'll try one more time. Are you guys able to see that? It's just black for me. <laughs> oh, bummer. Maybe go wind of it. Wait, uh, you know what? Here, we'll hack this together. Are you able to see that now? Same effect? Same. <laughs> Maybe a oh, screenshot bummer. showing the PNG or something if, if you just want to capture a single moment. Yeah, let me do that real quick. We'll, we'll modify the slide real quick. <laughs> All right, are you guys able to see that? Just a black screen for me. Oh, really? We're back to the presentation. Um, Unshare and start again? Yeah. Da, da, da. OK, are you guys able to see that? That's more yeah. like it. OK, cool. Let's, let's see if, what if I run it again, if it blows up. How's that? Did it black screen again? Looks like we might have just lost uh, updates. Like it's oh, now it's black screen. Yeah. All right, I'll stop and reshare it. I won't try to run the game again. Bummer. Well, I took a screenshot and all that. So, um, happy to give a demo of the game later if anybody's interested. Um, now you can see it. I think if you have everything open before you screen share, then it then it works. Oh, this is just a screenshot. Oh, ha. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I open the game, it looks like the screen share went black when I ran love. Um, that's interesting. So here's a, here's a screenshot of the game. So you shoot these little towers out of this cannon, and they all have um, various nuanced behaviors. Some of them shoot arrows. Some of them bump into these little uh, pink creeps that come down on the screen. So after you shoot them out of the cannon, the game basically plays like an auto battler. Um, so the, the problem that I had is I've got you know 40 towers or so that I want to make that oh I just quick you know dun, dun, dun. and I want to be able to share logic between these towers in a way that is concise and allows me to sort of express what each tower does uniquely in um, the smallest amount of lines of code as possible and so using the the mix-in system um, I have this basic tower shape which is just a box 2d body and then Archer Tower sort of just used the do to macro to sort of add all these mixins onto itself. And of, at first, I had created a mixin macro to do this, but I, I realized that do to sort of did everything that I wanted. And um, what I arrived at is um, something I'm pretty proud of and something that has enabled me to move really fast. Um, the whole demo is just around 500 lines of code. Um, and that's, you know, the game is 90% of the way there. And that's including all the tower definitions and things like that. So I'm pretty happy with with how this turned out. Um, and at the end of the day, whether, whether this is good or not, Fennel allowed a platform for me to sort of experiment with this game dev first language um, that I've been thinking about for a long time. And you know, it ended up being the platform for me and, and what I'll be using to take my game to completion. And we'll be hopefully launching a Fennel game on Steam sometime next year. So um, a couple things that I wanted to talk about but didn't quite have time for, just some other things that I've been hacking on in Fennel. I have a Flexbox implementation that's about halfway there. Um, I brought the timeline concept from Arcadia in. Um, that graphics operations macro library is still growing, um, as well as a Fennel VFX engine that are macros for defining motion and particle effects. Um, all of these that I hope to open source over the next year. So. Thank you. That's all I had. That's my contact information. Um, you know, setting out to, to do indie game development and trying to pick a stack, once I sort of discovered Fennel and got into it, I, I, in the last 10 years of game development, I've never experienced anything like Fennel in, in terms of how productive it's allowed me to be and how much fun I've had doing it. Um, so thank you, Phil and Calvin, for creating such an awesome programming language. And uh, that's all I had.